All right, welcome everyone. This is our part two of our social skills training. And the, this topic, we are gonna be focusing on maintaining and, and ending conversations. And then another one that we always kind of struggle with is that handling disagreements. So we are gonna be covering some steps. We're gonna be giving you guys lots of strategies and information. Um, so I'm really excited to get started today with you. Um, for those of you that may not know me, my name is Sylvia Gill. I am the manager of the Daniel Jordan Fiddle Foundation Transition and Adult Programs. And again, this is part two, so maintaining, ending conversations, and handling disagreements. So before we kind of get started, we want to look at why are we doing this social skills training, okay? So as we started to plan, we broke it up into four parts. So for those of you that may have joined us, the first session, trading information and starting conversations, um, you know, characteristics of a good friend, that was in our previous uh, part one. And again, you can always have access to that in our Padlet um, or our, our social skills resource page. So please feel free at the bottom, there is a link and you will be able to view that training. This is part two. So again, that, you know, exiting the, and ending the conversations, handling those disagreements. We will have a part three next month um, that will be handling feedback and finding a group. And then the last session is gonna be for any parents, caregivers, siblings, anyone that helps you with some of that social coaching. This will be a really good training for them to come just so that we can kind of share everything we covered and how they can support you um, in really working on some of the social skills that you wanna work on. So, you know, again, we take this training because we really ultimately want to make friends. We want to connect with other people. And in order to do that, sometimes it's really good for us to just know the skills, practice the skills, sometimes know the rules. And that's always hard to do. Um, sometimes we need to really be taught some of these social rules. And that's what we're here for. Um, this is based on the peers training model. We do recommend that you try to attend all the sessions. Please don't worry if you didn't make session one, because like I said, we did record it as we are recording this session, and you can always see it at a later time on our Padlet. Um, and again, that final session will be for your parents, and that's really gonna just help you improve and maintain the skills that we talk about today. So in terms of part two, what are we gonna do? So before we begin, we're gonna do a little bit of some rules and a quick review. And then we're gonna go into maintaining a conversation. So last session, we kind of talked about that starting a conversation, how to enter into a group, how, you know, what are some of those rules, but then how do we keep it going? How do we keep having this conversation? Sometimes how do we end a conversation? So the conversation ends, do we just run away? You know, so we're gonna learn some of those social rules as to how do we end certain conversations? And then the last one, which is something that's really important too, is how do we handle disagreements, okay? So let's get started. So some of the rules before we really get started is we're gonna have your microphones on mute. And the reason we're doing that is because there are so many of us that we really wanna make sure that everyone can hear all the information. Um, and you know we will have times where you will participate into the presentation. Another kind of suggestion is for you to see the speaker view. So if you look at the right corner, you should be able to select speaker view. And that way you can see me as I'm presenting the presentation. If you have a question, you know, please use the chat. So Natalie and Jen, which many of you know, are on the chat. Now they cannot do any private messages, but please, you know, share your questions with everyone. Since again, there's lots of us. Make sure we're using the chat for everybody and we will be able to answer your questions and we'll have a Q&A for after. So once we're done with this, um, we will be able to open it up for additional questions. And then of course, we always stress this out is that we wanna be respectful and friendly. So try avoid the swearing or giving feedback. If there needs to be any feedback, remember to allow the facilitators would be myself, Jen and Natalie to give any type of feedback to the participants. And the other thing you may see, you saw this in part one, but you're gonna see this again throughout each session is we're gonna talk about think about it and write it in the chat. So I'm gonna sometimes in some of the, the questions or the topics, I'm gonna ask you some questions. 
I want you to really take some time. You can think about what you want to say, and then you want to write it in the chat, and then we can all share it, okay? So just when you see that little visual cue, know that that's what we're going to be doing. All right, so now we can get started. So the first thing is, is maintaining that conversation. So, all right, we got our visual. Think, and we're going to write about it. What do teens and young adults talk about? What are some common things when you're in a group of friends or even a family member of anyone you have conversations with, what is it that you guys talk about? And Jen, you can share with us what are some of the things that we're hearing. Hi, okay, we've got games that someone wrote. That's excellent. So come on, you guys, what else did you guys talk about? Put in, oh, life issues, movies. Nice. Oh, how your day has been, hobbies. Uh, video games, school stuff, things they have going on, school, basketball, different subjects, uh, favorite activities, family and classes. Awesome. So, yeah. All of these are really great suggestions. You know, I really like that a lot of us, you know, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, but really these general common interest types of topics that you guys are sharing. So thank you so much for sharing. And the other thing I want you to think, and this one's a little bit harder, is how do we talk to our friends and have a good conversation? How do we do it? Let's see. Go ahead and we'll give you a chance. Put that in the chat if you have an idea on how you talk to your friends. And that's okay. Maybe that's why we're here, right? So how do we do it? We have another topic, pop culture. Ooh, oh, someone has said you need to think before you say what you have to say. It's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, here's someone who starts with how you doing. That's a great way to do it. Being positive with issues that you bring up and talk about things that teens talk about. Yeah. Another person said how you feeling is another way to start. So. All great. Thank you guys so much. And we're going to talk about that. So what do we talk about? And then how do we have that good conversation and maintain the conversation? All great suggestions. So thank you guys so much for, for giving us that feedback. And so many of you guys said that, right? So what do we talk about? And a lot of you, you know, shared those common interests, right? So we can talk about school and work, sometimes sharing problems that we're having with our friends and family. Many of us love to share about video games, computer games, and movies, uh, books, and concerts, and you know, even YouTube videos you watch, and hobbies. So all of these are really good conversation starters. And you guys can look at this and use some of these as like, okay, these are the things that we're gonna start and, and what I can talk about, what I can share, okay? But I think the hard one is how do we do it? So we know what to talk about, but how do I talk to a friend? How do I have a good conversation? And so the last time, Jen, you know, we, we, this is kind of a quick review, but it's that rules of trading information. So in order to maintain and have a good conversation, we want to be able to ask the other person questions. You know, some of those, especially those open-ended questions to really learn more about them, um, even answering your own question. So if you propose a question, you can also answer that question as well. Um, another really big one is finding those common interests. So what is it that we both have in common that we can both talk about and enjoy talking about? We want to ask some follow-up questions and sharing the conversation. So I know we had a lot of fun, you know, some of the mistakes that we have all made. Um, but really, these are, how, you know, if you have the rules for treating information, it makes it easier to maintain that information and maintain the conversation. So again, as we have conversations with our peers, our friends, we really wanna make sure that we're not repetitive. So just because we both really enjoy a video game, that doesn't mean that's the only thing we can talk about. Because after the fifth time of talking about, uh, you know, a Mario Kart, mm, it gets, you know, then your friend's like, okay, I want to talk about something else. So we want to avoid, you know, we want to avoid being repetitive, talking about the same things over and over again, and trying to find different common interests and different things to talk about. And just because you find a common interest doesn't mean that's the only thing we talk about. So we don't have to be stuck on that. We can expand and then go back to the list. What are other things that we can talk about that we share? 
Another one is listening. Sometimes we get really excited about the topics we want to talk about, and then we talk the whole time. So it's really good and really important for us to listen because it really shows that we're interested in the conversation. And then asking those open-ended questions. So questions that can lead to more conversations. If I just give those closed-ended ones, you know, those one word or yes or no questions, it's gonna be a really hard conversation to maintain. So these are some things that we wanna keep in mind as we try to maintain these conversations. So here are the tips, and these are things that many of us have done, and you can kind of think, I want you to think about some conversations that we've had that maybe weren't a positive experience, and we can ask ourselves, did I do this? Was I being a bragger? Like, man, look, I go to the gym, I'm so, I'm so muscular, look how great I am. You think people wanna to talk to us like that? Or if you're argumentative, every time I have a conversation, if I don't agree with that person, I'm gonna automatically kind of argue with them. Mm, it may not be a good conversation or policing them. Sometimes people are going to say things that and they may make a mistake. Do we want to correct them every single time? Because it's not they may not want to talk to you anymore. So we want to be careful about some of the mistakes that we make. So these are the tips for trying to avoid being the bragger, argumentative, policing. Another one which Teasing is, is hard because you might want to, you know, you might want to think you're saying a joke, but if you're making fun of someone or teasing them, you're probably going to make them feel bad and they're not going to want to maintain that conversation. Another thing that we want to do is really realize our volume control. Am I yelling at this person or am I talking really low and they can't hear me? So understanding where's my volume control. And then the last tip would be really using that good body boundaries and maintaining eye contact. So if I talk to them and I'll look them in the screen, I'm really close, it's gonna make that person feel uncomfortable. So we wanna make sure, am I giving enough distance? Am I engaging and trying to make eye contact so they know I'm listening when they talk? So these are just some kind of quick tips as you try to maintain that conversation. So now this is kind of the fun part, okay? So the fun part is we are gonna look at some videos and again, you see the visual, we're going to think about it and we're going to chat about it. So we want to know what are some mistakes people make when trying to maintain a conversation. OK, so we're going to I want you guys to watch the video. And then once we watch the video, you're going to answer some questions um, in the chat and share with what you thought. So this is the first one. OK, so I want you to look and try to see what did this person do wrong? Okay, so what would, and then what was that like for the other person? What did they think of Alina? And what would she want to talk to Alina again? Okay, so let's watch the video and then we're going to write in the chat. Hey, Jordan, how are you doing? Fine. How was your weekend? I don't know, fine. What'd you do? I don't know. Have you seen that new sci fi movie that just came out? No, it's really good. Cool. All right, so let's think about it, right? What was that like for the other person? So the one that was trying to listen in the conversation and Jen can let us know, what was that like for the other person? What do you guys think? Awkward, scary, <laughs> like a weird movie kind of, overwhelming. Yeah. She felt nervous, she looked uncomfortable yeah um, yeah okay so and what did she think of alina what do you guys think she thought she was awkward and everyone is saying what alina did wrong which is that she stood way too close and her body language wasn't good awesome um, she might she was bored maybe she thought she was disturbing weird awkward and scared so think about it would she want to talk to alina again she may never want to talk to her again. <laughs> For sure. Do you think this is a good way to maintain a conversation? No. You know, so our body language, you know, even if it was a subject that she wants to talk about, just because of the body language, it was uncomfortable and she's not going to want to maintain that conversation. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for sharing. So let's look at one more. All right. So again, we're going to look at the same questions. 
What was that like for the other person? What did she think of Alina? And would she want to talk to Alina again? All right, let's listen. Thanks for coming over. Yeah. I was going to order us a pizza. Do you still want to? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, cool. So I'll call and order us a pepperoni. Actually, I don't really like pepperoni. Who doesn't like pepperoni? Are you kidding me? No, I just don't really like the taste. Are you serious? Pepperoni is the best kind of pizza. Everyone knows that. I just don't really like it. What do you order then? Like cheese? That's so boring. Pepperoni is so much better. Yeah, well, I really like cheese. Well, pepperoni is way better than cheese. I'm not going to get, like, boring cheese. Everyone knows. I mean, it's not a big deal. We can just maybe half cheese, half pepperoni. No, we're not doing that. I want to get a whole pepperoni pizza. All right, guys. So thinking of the video, you guys have a, a, a second to think. Mm -hmm. What was that like for the other person? Yeah. Um, it. Some people said Alina was rude. Uh, she was argumentative. She talked too much about pepperoni mm -hmm. and yeah. So what did she think of Alina? What do you guys think? Whoops. Oh, okay. Um, she thought she was being all about herself. She's being rude, insistent, uncompromising, um, argumentative. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that she's going to want to talk to her again? Let's see, we have some no's. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> and so sometimes when we're trying to maintain a conversation, and, and this could not just be about pepperoni, but it could be anything. Something maybe you feel passionate about. Maybe you're talking about a video game, and this is what you believe. But when you're having a conversation, if you are argumentative, that person may not want to talk to you anymore. They're going to say, you know what, every time I try to talk to them, they want to pick a fight. They want to argue about something. And that's not going to be pleasant in a conversation. So again, that's something we need to be aware of if we are argumentative in our conversations. Quick way for it to end. The other person's not going to want to hang out. All right. So now we talked a little bit about maintaining conversations. We are going to launch a poll and I'm going to ask you some questions. Now, there is you know, it, it's just doing your best, right? We're not grading you. It's not a test. You just think, I want you to respond the best you can. And then we're going to see where, where we're at. Okay. So number, the first question, it's true or false, right? When having conversations, you should only discuss your common interest. Is that true or false? When having conversations, you should only discuss your common interest. True or false? And the next one, while having a conversation, you should be argumentative, brag about all your accomplishments, use good body boundaries and maintain eye contact or police the conversation. So when you're having a conversation, you should be argumentative, brag about all your accomplishments, use body good body boundaries and maintain eye contact or police the conversation. I'm going to give you guys about 30 more seconds to respond and then we'll go over it. Again, this is not for a grade. This is just for fun. Okay, just to see where we're at so we know. Ten more seconds. All right, three, two, and one. All right, so let's share the results. So look at that. Many of you saw when having conversations, you should only discuss your common interests. Now, yes, we definitely want to discuss common interests, and I know this was kind of a tricky one, but that shouldn't be the only thing you talk about. Right. We have that whole list of what are different things that we can talk about and we can also bring up different conversations and maybe learn something from the other person. So not the only thing you want to talk about, but many of you guys saw that. I know that was a tough one, um, but it is something, you know, to keep in mind. We don't want to just talk about the common interest, but also we can talk about other things. 
And the second one, while having a conversation, you should, many of you got this, use good body boundaries and maintain eye contact. Because when we're argumentative, remember the pepperoni video, we don't want to be argumentative with people. Uh, we really want to make sure we have good body link up boundaries and maintain that eye contact so the person knows that we're interested in the conversation. Awesome job, guys. Thank you so much for participating. I'm going to exit that. All right, let's keep it going, guys. So that was maintaining conversations. The next thing we're going to look at is exiting the conversation. So sometimes this gets a little bit awkward. You know, we're going to see different ways and different scenarios of how do we leave a conversation. Sometimes many of us are in a conversation and we just walk away. Well, when we do that, people might say, well, why did they leave? So we want to figure out what are the rules? What are some good steps for exiting a conversation? And so when we exit the conversation, there are three scenarios. That means three situations that we might be in. So the first one we're going to look at is it's a conversation when we're never accepted. That means we're having a conversation, but the group didn't really want to talk to us. And that happens, right? And it's happened to me where I jump in and the group didn't want me to be a part of the conversation. So that's one scenario one. So the first situation. The second one is conversations when we're initially accepted, but then excluded. Okay, there's some rules for that. And the last one, we're going to look at how do we exit a conversation when we're fully accepted, but we really have to leave. All right. So three scenarios. We're going to break down each rule and we're going to watch a video so you can see it in action. So let's look at, you know, scenario one. This is the first situation that could happen. This happens when you are exiting a conversation that they didn't really want to include you in. No one really paid attention. No one was looking. So this is what you can do. And so step one, and again, we'll watch the video after, but step one is to keep your cool. If you're being excluded in a conversation, you don't want to storm and be like, why aren't you listening to me? Because they're going to say, okay, well, I really don't want to talk to this person now. And it can really give you that bad reputation if you're, if you're losing your cool. All right. So we need to keep our cool. The second step would be to look away. So if you're in a conversation that you're being excluded from, you want to, and this is all, we got to be a little smooth here, right? We're not just going to sprint. We're going to casually look away. We're not going to make eye contact because this kind of shows, you know what? I'm not interested in this conversation. I'm going to slowly turn my body and then I'm going to walk in the direction that I'm looking. All right. So we don't want to look this way and then walk this way. It's going to look really silly. So we turn our face, turn our bodies, casually walk away. Okay. So I want you guys to look at the video and then we'll talk about it. Jordan, you'll never guess. I saw Dan with my favorite sushi restaurant this weekend. Nice. What restaurant was it? Um, just the one right around the corner. Oh, I've been meaning to try that place out. Yeah. yeah, it's so close by and I've never tried it, but I went and it was really good. Oh, nice. What'd you guys get? I got a spicy tuna roll and I loved it. Oh, yeah. You got a spicy tuna roll? That's what I always get. Well, what did you get? Um, just the salmon roll. Oh, yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. If you were going to go, what would you get? Probably the California roll. It's my favorite. Yeah. Good choice. All right, so think about it. And, it. and for those of you that saw part one, do you see she was using a prop? She did everything really good to try to enter the conversation, but now she was being excluded and she followed the steps. So now let's think and let's chat about it. Did it seem like they wanted to talk to Alina? And how could we tell? Did the group want to talk to her? No. No, right? And how do you know it was no? What were some of the signs that you guys saw in the video? The body language. Yes, that's a good one. The body language. And in terms of body language, what did you see? And they didn't look at her directly. Someone said they ignored her. Yeah. Um, definitely their body. They talked less to her. No looking. Yeah. Okay. Using that body. Remember we talked about body language and eye contact. That's a cue that someone wants to talk to us. So if they're kind of turning their back to you 
and they're not including you in the conversation, that's a cue that maybe I'm not included in this conversation and I'm gonna follow the steps. I, she, and now let's look at it. What did Alina do right when she exited that conversation? What were some of the steps you saw? I'm gonna go back so you can see it. What are some of the things you saw? Anyone have any ideas? Look at this, look at step one, two, three, and four. Which of these did Elena do? She acted like she didn't care. That was great. Perfect, she kept her cool, right? She wasn't mad, she was like, all right, fine, I'm out. She walked away without looking back, someone said. Perfect. She used her body language to just turn. Beautiful. Um, thing. Just walking away, maintain calmness, someone pointed out. Awesome, awesome, guys, you've got it. So remember, if I'm exiting a conversation I'm not included in, I kept my cool, she looked away, she turned her body and then moved in the direction where her body was. And you know what? Hey, not a big deal, okay? But now there's some conversations where we're starting to be accepted, we start talking, but then I start to feel I'm being excluded. So here are some of the steps. Again, we want to keep our cool. Always gonna be the first step. And then again, we're gonna look away. Then here's a, this one's the, the next step. We're gonna wait for a brief pause. Now there's never a perfect moment, but we don't wanna to try to interrupt someone's story or so, when someone's talking. So when there's kind of a brief pause and I'm starting to realize I'm being excluded, we wanna give a brief cover story. So maybe reasons that you have to do, you know, reasons you have to do something. So, hey, gotta go, take care, see you later. We're not gonna give them an elaborate story, something brief and just, hey, I gotta run and you, you, you leave. And then we're gonna walk away, okay? So this has a little bit more. This is again for your step of, you're starting to be included and then excluded. So we kept our cool. Again, I'm gonna look away, wait for that brief pause in the conversation and just let them know, hey, I gotta go, take care, see you later and I'm gonna walk away, okay? So again, I want you to watch the video, look at Elena's steps and start to see, is she following the steps? So Jordan, you'll never guess, I saw Gabe at my favorite sushi restaurant this weekend. Nice, what restaurant was it? Um, just the one right around the corner. Oh, I've been meaning to check that place out. Yeah. yeah, it's so close by, and I'd never gone, but I went, and it was really good. Oh, nice. What did you guys get? I just got the spicy tuna roll. It's really good. You got the spicy tuna roll? That's what I always get. Yeah, it's really, really good there. Yeah, it's good there. Have you guys tried the rainbow roll? No, I haven't. I haven't. It's Anyways, good. what roll did you get? Um, just the salmon roll. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you were going to go, what would you get? Probably the California roll. It's my mm. favorite. Good choice, yeah. Well, I gotta go, you guys. All right, Bye. See you. My friend actually got the California roll and she loved it. All right. So, again, let's think and we're gonna chat about it. So, what did Elena do right in entering that conversation? So, this is for maybe those that were in part one or saw the, the recording of it. What did she do right when trying to enter that group conversation? See if anyone can point that out. She paid attention by listening. Yeah. Waited until they were kind of in a pause when they were done talking. Awesome. You saw the pause. Yep. Stay positive. That's another good thing. Good. And did it seem like they wanted to talk to Elena? Maybe. Yes. Maybe. You know, at first, right? At first, or maybe only the guy did. Yeah, you see, so there was that partial. So I know this one's a little bit tricky. She was included in the beginning, but did you notice what happened to some of the, the, the people in the conversation? What did you notice they started to do? The other girls acted weird. They kind of strayed off away from her, strayed mm -hmm. off from her. That's a really good point. They ignored a little bit. So you started to see they're starting to ignore her. And instead of lingering when you're being ignored, she followed the steps. So in that, what did she do right in exiting that conversation? I'm going to go back so you can see it. In that video, what did she do right? Uh, 
Uh, she said goodbye while she was exiting. Yeah. She gave that brief, that was that brief cover story, right? Gotta go, bye. Yeah. She said lives. goodbye and walked away and stayed calm, waited for a good moment. Good. Gave a brief ex explanation. Perfect. She was brief, right? So yeah. these are all great, great. Um, nice. And some people said nice and she was nice and professional about it. She just said, oh, I gotta go. And think about it. Did she leave with a bad reputation? No. 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 So that's the, the trick. If Elena was like, wow, you guys are excluding me. You don't want to talk to me. Then do you think they're going to ever want to talk to her again? Probably not, right? So it's really important that even if you were initially accepted and then excluded, we want to keep up that good reputation and follow these steps because guess what? Maybe next time they maybe just they were they were huddling in a group and talking something personal, but maybe next time they're going to be open to wanting to talk to us, okay? And now let's look at the last scenario, right? So this scenario and scenario can, you know means this situation or what we could be a part is the steps for exiting a conversation when we're fully accepted, but we have to leave. That means friends are talking to us, we're engaged, but we have to go. Because if we leave really abruptly and run out, they're probably not gonna wanna talk to us. So again, because this is blocky. When, the, the this one's a little bit different. So what we wanna do is wait for a pause, right? So we're looking for those little pauses in the conversation or in the story. And for this one, when you are fully accepted, you want to actually give a specific cover story. Okay. So the reason you want to do that is you don't want people to think you're in line. So maybe you really have to go, you know, I, you know, it was great talking, but I have to go to work. I have to go to school. I have some, you know, we have something. This is why you're leaving the conversation. The reason you kind of want to be specific is it tells them like, I'm not making this up. I really do have to go. I have to go to work, but that you're kind of enjoying this conversation. And then we want to tell them that we'll see them later. So this lets your friends know that you want to hang out again and you're leaving because you have to go, but not because you want to go. You want to say goodbye and then you want to walk away. All right. So again, this is scenario three. When you're fully accepted, you wait for that pause, giving the specific cover story. You let them know you're going to see them later. You say goodbye and then you walk away. All right. We don't just abruptly run. So these are the steps. So again, we're gonna watch the video and then we're gonna think about it and chat about it. So how was your weekend? It was really good. I actually went hiking. Oh, cool. Where'd you go? Um, just by the trail that's right by campus. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, I've been a few times. I normally just do the easy trail. What about you guys? I've done the hard one a couple times, but it's a little much. I usually just stick to the easy one. Yeah, I've tried both. Yeah. They're both really fun, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my ride's here, so I actually have to get going. Okay. Yeah, but it was nice talking to you guys. Yeah, you too. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. So have you tried any other hikes in the area? I've tried a few. All right, guys. So let's think. Let's move to our next slide. What did she do right in exiting that conversation? So let's look back at her steps. What did she do right when she left that conversation? She let them know she had to leave. Mm -hmm. She said, I have to go. Yeah, my right is here. Yeah, she. Someone just said that she let them know her ride was there, so she gave a reason. A specific good, reason. good. She waited for a pause. She said goodbye to her friends. Her ride is there. Good. All of those things, right? She kind of went through the steps, and then she exited. So now, what do you think the group thought of Elena? What do they think of her? They thought she was cool. They thought she was a good person. They were glad to see her. She was kind, a great friend to hang out with, nice. Yeah, because I want you guys to think about it. What do you think would have happened if Elena didn't follow the steps and she just was like, bye, and walked away? I'm throwing an extra one at you, but. They might think she was mean. Yeah. That maybe she didn't care about talking to them. Awesome. Or 
disrespectful, uncool kind of. So this great conversation that they were having, potential friendships now could have been ruined because she exited abruptly and they thought maybe she was rude. So this is why it's kind of important for us to see, okay, what are some of those steps that are helpful so that we can continue to maintain these types of conversations, exit, and then be able to come back so you can have friendships um, and continue having these types of friends um, when we when we follow the steps. All right. So I know sometimes it's hurtful, but there are reasons for not being accepted in conversations. And typically, and this is not just for those on the spectrum or struggle socially, but for anybody. You know, on average, five out of 10 times you try to have a conversation, you're not accepted into the group. All right, so that's like 50%, okay? So it's not always your fault, but we wanna keep in mind some of the reasons why we're not being accepted is maybe those people wanna talk privately. So maybe Natalie and Jen are having a private conversation. You know, maybe it's something personal that that Natalie was just sharing with Jen and I jumped in, but that wasn't appropriate for me to come in. So maybe they were having a private moment. Maybe they think you're being rude or you're mean. Maybe you have history of exiting conversations or interrupting or policing and they just think, mm, I don't wanna to talk to this person. Uh, maybe you broke one of the rules for entering the conversation or you got too personal, right? So maybe you jumped in and started sharing things that were really personal that made them feel uncomfortable. Maybe they're in a clique and they didn't wanna make new friends or they're talking about something that you don't know about. Uh, you may have a bad reputation with them and maybe they did not understand that you were trying to join. So see, these are some of the things that could happen as to why you're not being accepted into the conversation. So what can we do differently? So if you find yourself constantly trying to join conversations and you are being rejected and you're not, you know, you're really struggling with that, what you wanna to try to do is try again later and listen before you join. Wait for that pause. Wait for something that maybe you can share. Maybe we wanna try a different group. Maybe find a different set of, of friends or other adults to talk to or teens. Maybe we want to try again later, but following the steps. Again, if we want to follow the steps of entering the conversation, you can look at, at part one, but even exiting the conversation, look at the steps and try following them. Um, try Again, trying a different group and not getting too personal. Try a group that is talking about something you know. So if you're really passionate about, I don't know, it could be anything. You're really passionate about uh, the environment. Okay. I'm really passionate about recycling and the environment. You want to then talk to people and have conversations with something you're comfortable talking about. Maybe it's a specific video game that I, I really love talking about it. So I want to talk to a group that's also talking about it. So finding again, those common interests and sharing with a group that has similar common interest and maybe trying a different group that does not know or care about your reputation. Maybe you were with a group of people that, Maybe you weren't following all the steps and maybe you came off as rude or mean, or you had some of these concerns, maybe trying a different group, okay? So these are just some tips of what we can try to do at a different time. All right, guys. So again, we're gonna follow our next poll of exiting a conversation. Before we do that, remember there are three scenarios that you would be exiting the conversation. So that first one is you were never accepted. The second one would be that you are partially accepted, but then excluded. And the third one is that you are fully included in the conversation, but you really have to go. So there are three scenarios of how to get out of a conversation. So depending on what you're experiencing, go back and look at the, you know, the steps um, for that. All right, so let's launch our next poll, which is exiting a conversation. The first one, if you are not accepted into a group conversation, you should keep your cool or keep talking until the group listens to you. Again, you're trying your best. Do not worry. If you get it wrong, it's not a big deal. But let's look at number one again. If you are not accepted into a group conversation, you should keep your cool or keep talking until the group listens to you. 
Now let's look at the next one. When exiting a conversation that you are fully accepted in, you should give a brief cover story and run quickly. Oh, I forgot. Quickly run away because you need to go or give a specific cover story. Say you'll see them later, wave goodbye and walk away. So again, when you're exiting a conversation that you are fully accepted in, meaning they're all talking to you, engage with you, what should you do? Give a brief cover story and run. Quickly run away because you need to go or give that specific cover story. Say you'll see them later, wave goodbye and walk away. I'm gonna give you guys about 15 more seconds to answer the questions. Again, we're just trying our best. All right, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, guys, let's see. All right, so let's look at number one. If you're not accepted into a group conversation, you should, yes, keep your cool. We want to keep our cool because, again, that helps with our reputation. Maybe they didn't want to talk to us at that point because Again, let's look back at some of the reasons. Maybe they were having a private conversation. Maybe it was them, not us. So by keeping our cool, maybe the next time we try to talk to them, they're more open. If I'm constantly talking and saying, well, you need to listen to me, mm, they may not wanna talk to us next time, all right? The next one, when exiting a conversation that you're fully accepted in, you should absolutely, guys, give that specific cover story, say you'll see them later, wave goodbye and walk away. Because if we just run off, they're gonna think, wow, this person is very silly for running away. And they might think, you know what, they're rude. They didn't wanna talk to us. Or maybe they're gonna feel like she didn't wanna talk to us. And they're gonna feel excluded and then they're not gonna wanna talk to you again. So really making sure we do all the steps so they knew that, they, that we were also interested in the conversation. Awesome, awesome job, guys. All right, let's keep it going. This is the one I think many of us, and I'm gonna even say myself, struggle with, handling disagreements, okay? So this is gonna be a big one that we're gonna focus on and we're gonna talk about, okay? Now, handling disagreements. I wanna make sure that we know that arguments are common. All right, so we may have disagreements, we may argue with our friends, our family, and some of these occasional arguments, they don't have to be the end of your friendship, okay? But it's important to know how to manage them so they don't hurt our friendship. So arguments happen, disagreements happen. Oh, and I wanna stress that occasional arguments, right? If you're fighting with your friend all the time, then might not be a care. Let's go back to what's a characteristic of a good friend, right? May not be one of them, but good friends have arguments and disagreements. But what sometimes happens is when we don't respond well to the arguments, it could end a friendship when maybe it wasn't that big of a deal. And so there's two types of scenarios. Sometimes we have to respond to a disagreement. That may mean a friend tells me, hey, Cece, you know, I really didn't like what you did. So you're, you gotta respond when someone's upset with what you did. So we're gonna talk about what are the rules for that, but then also what happens when I'm upset and I have to bring up a disagreement. So two ways of handling the disagreements. You're responding to a disagreement, meaning your friend is upset with you for something maybe you did or didn't do, and scenario two is we're upset, we're mad at our friend and we have to talk to them about it. So two scenarios we're gonna look at. So now again, we see our visual, think and write about it. Have you ever had an argument that ended a friendship? And I want you to know like, how did that make you feel? And Jen can share with us. So we have a lot of people talking about how um, sometimes it can feel really difficult. Um, it might feel like the friendship is over mm -hmm. and that it's difficult. It's it's hard um, so to not get upset. Um, let's see. Um, say the question again. All right. So it, let's do one question at a time. So the first thing, yes or no, 
Have you ever had an argument that ended the friendship? Meaning you are no longer friends with this person. Okay. Uh, some people are saying no, not yet. Um, yes, yes. We've had a couple yeses, couple no's. Okay. Not yet. Some people are aware that it could happen, but it hasn't happened to them yet. Yeah. And then this next part would be when you have a disagreement, okay? Not that it ended your friendship, but when you have a disagreement, how does that make you feel? We had some people feeling very upset. Yeah. Um, and uh, then they moved on and some people had an argument, almost lost their friend, lost their friends, but then still acted like they were good friends. They felt people have felt upset, awkward, guilty. Yeah. People feeling guilty, um, trying to respect their opinion and um, feeling misunderstood. Oh, that's right. such a big one, right? Yeah. And sometimes in arguments, it could sometimes be a miscommunication and those are really tough. Or maybe we feel we're accused of things and that's really hurtful. And so sometimes with arguments is we're dealing with a lot of our feelings. Um, and when we don't follow the steps, maybe a little deal turns into a very big deal. And so that's why these steps are really helpful. Um, and we're gonna kind of go through it one by one, but understanding how do I, you know, what do I do? What do I do when someone is mad at me? Which a lot of that, I get a lot of guilt. I have felt that. And then I'll, the next one would be like, what do I do when I'm mad? Because a lot of the time, sometimes I'm mad. I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. But then I'm always mad. And then it's not being a good friend. So it's really important for you to know how to handle it when someone's mad at you, but also how to bring up, you know, some of these disagreements. And, you know, and you guys can write in the chat. Do you guys struggle with handling these disagreements? Maybe sharing that you're upset with a friend or maybe getting really defensive if someone point something out to you that you don't like. Yeah, we've had some people saying that it is sure is painful to resolve a miscommunication. Oh, yeah. People feel upset. They try to think positive. Um, oh, some um, someone just shared that sometimes they feel like they are sometimes rude about it because it's hard to, mm -hmm. to share what they're feeling. And speaking up is hard. Yeah, that's great. It is so hard. And, and I want you, you know, I want to stress to all of you that we, everybody feels this way, handling disagreements and confronting or telling someone how you feel can be really challenging. Maybe it's really hard for us to share and communicate. So maybe finding a way, do we want to write a letter? Do we, you know, the best way for us to communicate as well. Okay. So I'm going to give you lots of steps, lots of tips. Um, and I'm hoping this will help you when you're handling your next disagreement. All right. So the first one we're going to look at is what do I do when someone is mad at me or a friend brings up a disagreement? OK, so there are a few steps that we're going to follow when a friend or someone is upset with us. All right. This is the, the first one. We're going to keep your cool. The first step in responding to arguments, even if you feel it's a miscommunication, what they're seeing is wrong. You know, don't automatically be like, well, that's not what happened. Because if you do that, you can escalate the argument. So we're going to keep calm. The way I like to keep calm is I take deep breaths. I'm going to count silently to 10. I'm going to take some time to cool down before I talk. So maybe even if my friend's like, I'm going to tell you because I'm upset with you, you did this. If you feel like you can't keep calm, say, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to call you back in 20 minutes or I'm going to call you tomorrow. Let me make sure I'm calm and then we can talk about it. All right. So it's really important that we keep our calm, you know, keep cool when someone is bringing up a disagreement. OK, the next step is you want to listen. So this person is upset. This person is whether it may have been your fault or not. Things happen. Miscommunications happen. But it's really important for you to listen, all right? And this is hard for us, but we've got to stop. So we're going to listen to what the argument or disagreement is. So if someone is upset, you want to listen before you share your side. Hear them out. Let them know because maybe it is a simple miscommunication that you can fix 
right away. And really listening is an important part of communication because it really helps us understand the other person's perspective. So again, we're keeping our calm. And if that means I have to call you back, I'm going to call you back and I'm going to listen to the person that feels upset. I'm not going to just jump right in and say, well, that's not what happened. Okay. We're going to listen. All right. The third thing is, is repeating what they said. So what does that look like? What we want to do is repeat back what they said, because we want them to know that you're listening. So maybe you want to share, like it makes them feel oh, by, by repeating what they said, it makes them feel heard and that you care and that you're showing empathy. So what can that look like? You could say, wow, it really sounds like you're upset or it sounds like what I said made you really feel bad. Or it sounds like I hurt your feelings. It sounds like you're frustrated with me because sometimes we do things. We don't mean it. We don't mean to hurt their feelings, but we did. So we want to repeat what they said so that they know you understand why they are mad. All right. Then you see, we're on step four. Before you explain yourself, there are four steps that we did. I kept my cool. I listened. I repeated. Then number four, then is when I start to explain my side. When I explain my side, I have to use I statements, okay? You don't want to say, well, you misunderstood and you did that. And well, you did this because you're going to ask, you know, then the disagreement is going to be really big. So we want to look at the I statements. So avoid telling the other person what they did wrong and calmly explain your side of the story. So I didn't mean to upset you. I think this is a misunderstanding or I think this was a miscommunication and then you can say your side of the story. But keep in mind, this is step number four. And here's a big one. The next one is we have to say we're sorry. Even if you feel like I didn't do anything wrong, but by saying sorry, we acknowledge that you really are sorry they feel that way. We don't want to hurt our friends. We don't want to make them feel sad or feel frustrated. So we can literally, you know, we. Just because you're apologizing doesn't mean that you're admitting your guilt because maybe you really feel like, hey, I really didn't do anything wrong, but you can feel sorry for how they feel. So I'm really sorry you're upset or I'm sorry your feelings got hurt. I'm sorry this happened. So that apology really helps the person that is angry and upset accept that and say, okay, you know, maybe next time we're not going to do that or, you know, they, they'll feel heard about it. So we want to say sorry. And then we want to solve the problem. So the last step in resp responding to a disagreement is to try and solve the problem. So let's say this was a miscommunication or a misunderstanding, which is a lot of the times arguments. You want to ask them, well, what can I do differently next time? <clears throat> ask them what they want you to do. So what should I do? Suggest what you want them to do. Remember to keep your cool if you can't solve the problem. And guess what? As hard as this is, there are going to be disagreements where you have to agree to disagree. Meaning we're going to both agree that this argument, we can't solve the problem, but we're going to move on from it. We're not going to really bring it up. I'm sorry you got hurt, but we're going to move on. All right. So sometimes that's that agree to disagree. That's a hard one to do. But if we want to move on and problem solve, we may have to do that. OK, so I saw the chat beaming, beaming, beaming. So I don't know, Jen, if there's anything uh, we need to share or. Or if I should keep going. You know, I think we can keep going, but I think everyone is just really agreeing that these are difficult and they they want to work on making friends, keeping friends, setting boundaries and love it. I start it. And these are hard because usually if we notice, we always start with step number four. Before anything, we 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 skip three steps. So I think the next time someone brings up a disagreement or an argument, we really want to look at step one step two, step three, and then explain your side. All right. So now let's look at the video. Look at how they're, they're what's happening. 
what steps, and then we're going to think about what steps did Alina follow, and does it feel like the argument is over, okay? So let's look at the argument. Alina, where were you this weekend? Were you supposed to hang out and go to the movie? And I went and I waited for you and you completely stood me up and I ended up sitting all alone on a Friday night. It completely ruined my night. Like, I don't understand what happened. It sounds like you're really upset. I am really upset. Like, I turned on other plans so that we could hang out and catch up and I wanted to see what you've been up to. And then I ended up just being doing nothing on a Friday night except for, like, standing alone and watching people, like, stare at me. Well, what happened is that I actually lost my phone this weekend, and you know how my my calendar and my contacts and everything is in my phone, and I actually thought that we had plans to hang out this weekend, not last weekend, so that's what happened. I mean, I didn't need my calendar to remember we had plans. Like, we talked about it, and I had been looking forward to it all week, and I really wanted to go. So, like, I, I, does it make me feel better that you just didn't remember that we had plans? I'm really sorry that this happened. I mean, I'm sorry, too. It was a really bad Friday night. Well, listen, it sounds like you haven't seen the movie still, and I haven't seen the movie either, and I would really love to make it up to you and go this weekend if you still want to, and this time I'll totally be there. I'm really looking forward to it. So would you want to go this weekend, maybe? Maybe. I'll think about it. Okay. All right, guys. So thinking of that, what steps did Alina follow when responding to a disagreement? Okay, we had step one. <laughs> Step one, two, four, five, and six that people know <laughs> noticed. Um, someone felt like Alina didn't really care that she didn't, maybe she didn't seem upset enough, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of people are wondering if the other girl overreacted. And doesn't that happen? Sometimes our friends may overreact. Yeah. Okay, we have um, someone said she kept her cool. She explained why she wasn't able to go. She offered a solution to fix the problem and she apologized. Awesome. So yeah. when we handle those disagreements, and did you notice Alina didn't get defensive and say, well, you know what? I, I lost my phone and that's what happened. Because had she done that, what do you think would have happened? If she met, if she got argumentative. How, how do you think that would have... What would have happened? It might have escalated. The other person would have had rage. But... <laughs> right? If you think she was overreacting in that video, imagine. It would have been explosive. And so sometimes the way we respond, because remember, our friend is feeling really upset. So if we start to get really upset too, then it could be really, you know, kind of tough. And that's going to be, that could end your friendship. So something like a miscommunication do you see that if I don't follow the steps, that could actually end my, my, my friendship over a miscommunication or a misunderstanding? And do you guys feel like the argument is over? Yes, we have some yeses. Seems like it's over. Yeah. Yeah, and it's over. Yeah, probably. Maybe not. <laughs> so, you know, even when we go through all the steps, sometimes our friends still may be having some hurt feelings um, and you may have to repeat the steps, but she de-escalated, she listened, she made sure that she gave I statements, you know, and she, she apologized and then gave a solution. What's the problem? You know, the, the, she, they've tried to problem solve. Okay. So she did follow all the steps. So now what do we do when we are upset? That's the next one. So how do we bring up disagreements? And this one can be really tough too, because sometimes many of us, even for me, I sometimes feel uncomfortable telling my friend or someone that I'm mad. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I'd rather just not say anything and, and just feel upset inside, but that's also not helpful, okay? So I'm gonna give you some good tips of how to bring up disagreements. So for the first one, step number one is waiting for the right time and place, all right? So when we want to bring up a disagreement, we want to make sure it's the right time and place to talk about the problem. So we want to make sure, are, am I alone? So we want to pull this person aside that we want to talk to 
and do it, you know, just alone, maybe private. And when you're both calm, if you feel really, really upset, like you're going to cry and scream and you're, you know, overwhelmed, I would, again, keep it cool, you know, make sure you have this conversation when you feel calm. So maybe you might have to wait a couple of days or an hour, play some music, relax, and then have the conversation. Uh, make sure you have the time to talk. So if you only have five minutes because you have to go to work, you want to make sure that you have enough time to talk about it and go through all the steps with your friend. And you want to do it when you're not going to be interrupted. All right. So again, as you're thinking of bringing up a, a disagreement with a friend, I really want to make sure it's the right time, meaning I have enough time to talk about it. I'm in a calmer state and it's the right place, meaning we're private or we can have a private phone conversation. So sometimes it's good to schedule these talks and, and tell your friend, hey, you know, um, I really want to talk to you. Can we talk on Friday night? And that scheduling time, make sure that both of you are available to talk and it's appropriate and when, you know, that you guys are, are have some privacy. So then the next one is, again, we want to keep your cool, right? We want to stay calm um, because arguments may escalate if you don't. So kind of what we were talking about, you want to pick a time when you're starting to feel calm because you can end up being in the wrong. So let's say it's a miscommunication and I'm yelling at my friend. Now it's my fault. And now my friend's going to be mad at me. So I want to make, you want to make sure that you're really keeping your calm and you because you don't want to jeopardize your friendship. Like we said, all friendships will have disagreements and arguments, and we don't want something like a small deal ruining a good friendship. Um, and so again, we talked about this, but some ways we keep our calm or we keep our cool is really taking those deep breaths. We can count, take some time to cool down before we have this talk. All right. So then step three is to ask to speak privately. So we figured out the time and place. We understand how to, how to do that. We're keeping our calm. And then I'm going to ask to speak to the person privately. Now we do this because you don't want others to know about your private business. You don't want people to gossip. So especially if this could happen like at a workplace or, you know, with a group of friends, you want to make sure that you're kind of talking private so that people don't gossip and it could be embarrassing for both of you. All right. And so how do we ask to speak privately? Um, you can text them, call them and say, hey, I need to speak to you about something. Can we go somewhere private? Can we, you know, schedule a, Zoom, a FaceTime or Zoom chat? Nowadays, we can talk in so many ways, right, that we're comfortable doing. Or you can tell them, I think we need to talk. Can I speak to you privately? So these are just some ways you could kind of make sure that you're talking privately. So then we want to go into step four. Again, you want to explain your side. You want to share why am I upset? Why do I feel uh, you know, frustrated and things like that? So you want to begin by using I statements, focusing on what you feel. You don't want to place the blame. So you don't want to say, hey, you did this to me and you made me feel this way, but really focusing on yourself. When you did this, it made me feel, I felt, you know, I, I felt upset when you canceled my plan. Oh, oh my God, lost my, hi everybody. So good to see all your faces. You know what, you guys, I want everyone to kind of take a nice stretch. There we go. And we're back. All right, guys. So again, we are using those I statements. I felt upset when you canceled our plans. I don't like when you speak to me that way. I feel hurt when you don't return my text. So you're focusing on yourself. You're not placing blame on the other person. All right. And step number five, listen. So now that you shared your side, now you're going to listen to what they have to say. We want to give them an opportunity to share maybe what happened and explain why maybe that happened. So the next step is to listen to the other person. If you don't listen, then you won't know why they did or said what they did if you didn't listen. Okay. And they also need a chance to explain their side. The argument may, may not be over if you don't listen to the other person. All right. So this is kind of a crucial part when you're bringing up a disagreement. 
Because sometimes in this part, you could be like, oh, it was a misunderstanding or it was a miscommunication. Um, you know, and then you could just be like, okay, my bad. The next step is repeat what they said. All right. So again, it's similar steps, but flipping it. So repeat back what they said to let them know they've been heard. So if you don't repeat what they said, they may keep explaining their side. And that can sound like, it sounds like you didn't know, or it sounds like you didn't mean to say that, or you didn't mean to hurt my feelings. So sometimes we want to repeat it so they know you understand their side of the story. And then you, this is a crucial one. You want to tell them what you need them to do. All right. Because guess what? You guys are here. You're learning the rules. Does that mean everybody knows what the rules are? Thumbs up or thumbs down. Does, does everyone know these rules? Maybe not. And so it's really important to, for us to let the other person know what you need. All right. So if they're not listening to your side, you can tell them, I need you to listen to what I am saying. Maybe they're not doing that phase where they're supposed to stop and listen. You need to tell them. If you feel that if they haven't repeated what you said, you could say, do you understand what I'm saying? If they haven't explained their side, you can ask, could you explain how this happened? And if they haven't said sorry, you can also say it would help if I knew you were sorry. So sometimes we as friends teach them the rules so that when you have another disagreement, maybe they learn from it and they can handle it better or no. Okay. I need to text you or no, I need to respond and things like that. And then the last one again, is we want to try to solve the problem. So the last step in responding to disagreements is to solve the problem. So we want, you need to be able to tell them what you'll do differently. Ask them what they, what they want you to do. So you want to maybe tell them, Hey, next time you can do this or maybe ask them, Hey, next time if you forget your phone, you know, make sure you call, ask your mom or ask a friend and try to get a hold of me. Um, suggest what you want them to do. And again, keeping your cool if you can't solve the problem and agreeing to disagree. And also remember that friendship is a choice. I know we said this in part one, but if a friend, if it's not a characteristic of a good friend, Please always know that friendship is a choice. You choose to be friends with a person or not. So every friendship will have arguments. Every friendship has disagreements. But if you feel like this person doesn't fit those characteristics of a good friend and you're always feeling upset, please always remember that friendship is a choice and you can choose maybe I don't want to be friends with this person and vice versa. Maybe someone can choose that for you. Maybe someone says, you know what, maybe you're not giving the characteristics of a good friend following the steps of an argument and can choose not to be friends with you. Okay. So again, we're going to watch the video and I want you to see what steps did Alina follow and do we feel like if the argument is over. So I think we're both on our break and I was wondering if I could talk to you about something privately? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I just heard that you've been talking about me behind my back and telling other people that I have a crush on Gabe and I'm just really upset because that was a secret and that's my own personal business and I just don't want everyone talking about me behind my back. Yeah, it sounds like you're really upset with me. Yeah, I'm really upset just because, you know, it was a secret and when I told you that I thought that you would keep it that way and I'm just upset that other people are talking about me and just kind of talking about my business and it's my personal life that I don't want other people to know about. I didn't realize it was a secret. I thought other people knew, so I didn't realize they would make fun of you for it. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you didn't know that it was a secret, but it's still really embarrassing. All right, so what are some of the, oh, they give you the answers, but what are some of the, the uh, steps that she followed? What do you think, guys? Want to put it in the chat? What's oh, all the steps? They felt like she stopped, followed all the steps. Yeah. What are some things that that pointed out that says, okay, when I'm bringing up a disagreement, I definitely need to do that. What are some of those keys? Cool. 
kept her cool. Mm -hmm. She said I statements. Yes. Yeah. Keeping in control, all the steps. Somebody said she was calm. And what were one of the first things that she brought up? And notice when they're talking, who's in the conversation? Oh. Well, first of all, she did good eye contact. She stayed composed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All great tips. And, and it was private, right? So they were talking about a gossip rumor. And so oh, she asked if it was a good time to bring up a disagreement. Awesome. Good catch, guys. Yeah, and the other girl did not deny responsibility. Yeah, so guess what? She also followed the steps. Sometimes we do make mistakes, um, so we have to bring up disagreements, but also know to say, you know what? Like, I'm sorry, you know? Um, and do we feel like the argument is over? Yes, looks like most people feel like that one's over. Awesome. So I think that's the biggest thing when we're handling disagreements, when we follow these steps, we can make sure that our disagreements are calm. We can communicate how we feel um, and then making sure we tell that person what they can do next time. You know, I would really appreciate if you didn't tell everyone, if I share something with you, please don't share it with other people because um, that can be really embarrassing. So that was really good. Anything else in the chat, Chad? Um, somebody said that one of the really good things was that they both exhibited sincerity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were sincere about it. And I think that's a, a really big one. Um, as we handle disagreements, whether you're responding to a disagreement or you're bringing it up, is really making sure you, you, you feel sincere about it. Because when the friend sees you're being sincere and you're, you really are apologetic, it makes that person feel heard and then you can move on from that disagreement. Awesome, guys. All right, so let's go into our poll time. So we're gonna take uh, our last poll is gonna be about handling disagreements. Again, you're trying your best. It's okay if you get it right, wrong. We're just here to have fun and uh, see what we learned. All right, so when we are handling disagreements, the first thing you should do when you get into an argument is listen and keep your cool or explain your side. What is the first thing you want to do in a disagreement? Should I listen and keep cool or explain your side? I know some of these are tough. Let's look at the second one, true or false. Disagreements never happen in a friendship. If you have a disagreement, you should end the friendship immediately. Is that true or false? And the third one, this one's also a, a hard one. When a friend accuses you of something you didn't do, should you say you're sorry that this happened? or your, explain your side until they believe you. That's the tricky one. Say you're sorry that this happened or explain your side until they believe you. Maybe you guys about 15 more seconds. All right, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so the first one, yes, the first thing you guys need to do when you get into an argument is listen and keep your cool. Before we start to explain our side of the story, we really wanna make sure that the person that's upset is being heard, and then we can explain our side of the story, okay? Remember, that was like step number four. True or false, disagreements never happen in a friendship. If you have a disagreement, you should end the friendship immediately. 
if that was true, none of us would have friends, right? So remember that friendships do have disagreements, they do have arguments, but we wanna make sure that we know the steps of how to handle them so that they don't become these big arguments um, or very explosive arguments, and then we can't maintain the friendship. And then the last one, which is kind of split, this was a bit of a tricky one, right? When a friend accuses you of something you didn't do, say you're sorry that this happened or explain your side until they believe you. So the first thing is, remember we talked about it, is really if someone is explaining, accusing you of something, right? I know that we get very defensive. That happens to me. If someone's accusing me of something I didn't do, I immediately want to be like, well, that's not what happened. Sometimes it's better for us to be like, I'm really sorry that this happened, but then you can go into your side, okay? So you want to say sorry that this happened, and then we could talk about it, all right? Awesome, awesome job, guys.